How to read ham DNA phylograms by Dave Ham. Narrated by Glenn Ham. This video is a quick study on reading the Y DNA phylograms for the Ham DNA project. Phylograms are name based charts that geneticists use to visualize their data. They are used to provide geneticists with an idea of what their data tells them at a glance. It may be complicated to create the chart, but it should be easy to read once it is created. If you have the chart, then the hard work is already done. The easy part is simply reading the chart because it tells you what all the DNA data means at a glance. The term phylo means name and a phylogenetic chart should be a name-based chart based on genetic data. So the phylo charts are simply charts of the DNA data arranged by the name associated with the Y DNA kit. It is a basic chart of the DNA results. There are several ways to chart out the data, but the charts posted to Ham Country are based upon the data for the time to most recent common ancestor or TMRCA as returned from Dean McGee's Y-DNA comparison utility. You can create other types of charts in the same way, such as a chart of the genetic distance, but the TMRCA chart enables the output to be charted along a reasonable timeline as measured in years. That's because the difference between a genetic distance chart and a TMRCA chart is due to the application of a mutation rate. If you apply per marker mutation rates to the genetic distance, then you should end up with a more accurate chart. In order to use the output from Dean McGee's utility, it is run through a program that converts Dean McGee's output into a charting format that is used by geneticists. This creates what geneticists call an output tree format, which can be viewed by tree viewing software. Here's an example of the tree format. For these graphs, the Philip software program is used to convert Dean McGee's utility output into a tree format, and then the mega software is used to view that tree. The software used to create this chart can be found in the Philip package. It's a program called KISH. KISH automatically sorts the data into groups that are similar to each other. The end result is a graph that looks something like this. When viewing the graph, it is helpful to remember that the Philip program has tried to group the data so the similar kits are next to each other, and the kits that are not so similar will not be so close together on the graph. First off, you can see that the haplotype groups branch off from each other. That's because haplotype groups were formed a very long time ago. In this graph, the haplotype groups are R1B1B2I, I2B, I1, and E1B1B1. If you look at the time scale below the graph, you can see that the haplotype groups coalesce together at some distant point in time. In this graph, the time scale indicates that most of the haplotype groups were formed some 7,000 years ago. That's because we don't have enough data in this chart. Geneticists usually agree that haplotype groups were actually formed more than 10,000 to 20,000 years ago. At any rate, the idea here is that only using the data from the Y-DNA kits, the haplotype groups are automatically sorted by the software. At the top of the graph, you can see a number of individuals grouped together, indicating that they should be more closely related. Highlighted in blue here is ham DNA group number two. The shorter the branch, the more closely related you would be to others on the graph. That's because you don't have to go as far back in time to connect to those with the shorter branch links. Here's the same thing for ham DNA group number one. Zooming in, we can see the time scale in years. 
Anything beyond 1,500 years ago will probably fall into a different ham family group. So, you should notice that the software program automatically sorts the data into groups. And if we follow Conrad back in time, kit number 112972, then we can see that we have to go back some 16,000 years before he connects to any of the other groups. Here's a slightly different example. Let's follow Richard Ham back to the time that he connects to Bartlett or Levi. This Richard is kit number 43250 from South Carolina. He's a completely different man than the Richard Ham of Virginia. We know that because the South Carolina Richard is the haplotype group R1B1B2, and the Richard Ham from Virginia is the haplotype I. We have to go back in time some 7,000 years before we run into their common ancestor. Let's follow kit 43250 back to kit 57298. First, follow the horizontal line back in time to the vertical line on the far left. This tells you that kit 43250 must go back some 2,000 years before he connects to ham DNA group number two. Next, we simply follow the lines up to either Bartlett or Levi at the top of the chart. That's all there is to reading a phylogenetic chart. It should show the haplotype group so that you know it takes a long time to go back to the most recent common ancestor for the haplotype. It should show you who is more closely related on the chart by grouping them more closely together. And it should show you who is not closely related by showing that it takes a long time to go back to the most recent common ancestor, or TMRCA. A phylogenetic chart should show you at a glance what the DNA data is telling you. 